has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bench, coast to coast in the biggest way possible, hanging out the best, eating a burger, eating a bad apple with a bad attitude, hanging around a bunch of bad, and a bad taste, bad love, bad dude, bad breath, bad attitude, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City Studios in the Pharrell Appalachian, right across the river through the woods from where Granny just got a fresh half ounce of the banana bread, and I'm not talking about the stuff you eat in New York City, the big apple. Ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, directing traffic, some kind of fashion, shake it up, should do, I'm a friend to come around, find a fight, a party up, rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, what a mess, it's tattered, tattered, but it's splattered all over Manhattan, should do, be shake it up, ooh, 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 I think I might have caught some from Keith, should do that, yeah, yeah, it's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it, yes, I do, but I like it, hey, what's gigging, I'm for Rob with your boy, Carver High this afternoon. Bocce ball, running it with Ty, Big Daddy Stick Jones at LTN in Kansas City, Mo, where the air conditioning is on full tilt today because your boy's all dressed up in winter garb inside like he's freezing ass. A birthday roll call on a Tuesday, shall we? Shea Gill just 24 today. Kellen Moore, 33. Pat Bev, 34. LaShawn Shady, 34. McCoy. Tom Gorsolani, 40. Christy Yamaguchi, 49. Julio Cesar Chavez, a legend, 60. And Paul Silas, 79. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> All righty, match beat the Braves just like we thought they would. Four to one last night. Scherzer, the man. How about your boy Louis Galorm with a solo crank to get it going for the Mets? We got Buck Showalter on the show. Cleveland beat the White Sox 8 4. Lance Lynn talking today on the show. Cards beat the Phillies 6 to 1. Corey Dickerson with a shot. JT Rail Muto won't let Canada tell him what to put in his body. Very upset today. We got the lion's share. We'll do all of our props, strikeouts, homers, game props. Carver High hitting Manny full of Machado last night with a drive, cashing, ringing the bell. Everybody's partying. Plus, game props. Dubs Anderson on the show today previewing the Open Championship. It begins on Thursday at St. Andrews. The Royals swept the doubleheader from the Tigers. Bobby Wood Jr. got involved. Pirates beat the Marlins 4-1. Jake Marisnik with a two-run shot. Brian Reynolds goes on the IL with an oblique strain. Rays beat the Red Sox 10-5. Ramirez with a big RBI single. Wander Franco out five to eight weeks with a wrist injury. Rangers beat the A's 10-8. Corey Seager with a homer. Padres beat the Rockies 6-5. Machado with that shot. D-backs over the Giants 4-3. Varsha with a two-run single. Dodgers have tied to the Reds allegedly about Luis Castillo. And Dodger Stadium concession workers threatening a strike ahead of the All-Star game. No Dodger dogs for the All-Star game. Nobody's going to be working the concession stands. Chaos in Lipstick City. Pete Alonso back in the home run derby looking for a three-peat fella. Home run derby participants who have allegedly agreed to participate are uh, Alonso, Pujol, Soto, Schwarbaum, and Acuna Jr. And Derek Jeter opens up about A-Rod in a big documentary that's coming out. The captain, tonight's games will break it all down, make you some money. Eight and two last night, hitting on the money line in MLB. We welcome all of our radio affiliates to Coast to Coast on a Tuesday. Sirius XM Channel 159, Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio in San Diego. Near to you, wanna do you, wanna? Sports map, sports byline, DPAC holding it down in the city. Bow, 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 yay, in the way, yay. Coach Young will join us today to talk about NBA rack off season and summer league. Pat Riley desperately wants another ring. He's trying to get Durant to Miami. Chad Holmgren powers OKC to another summer league win last night. He was all over the place, swatting shots, hitting threes. Quentin Grimes drops 24 for the Knicks. Matt Ryan's last second three gives the Celtics a big win over the Bucks, 111-109. We got your action for tonight in summer league. It's actually starting up right now as we speak. We got John Wall on the show, plus the NBA playing tournament is going to be a permanent thing moving forward in the league. And Zach Levine says he was only meeting with the Bulls. 
nobody else. We got today in Carver High history, fired up about that. Also some naughty shots of Rick Harrow today hanging out over the pond at the Open Championship causing trouble. Tiger gets his turn at bashing the live golf. Rory is ready for St. Andrews. We'll hear from him. We got your tee times and who can and cannot win the Open Championship. Heinz Field is no more. You knew the story. The new naming rights for the Steelers' home is Ackershire Stadium after the Michigan-based insurance firm. What a nightmare that is. Big Ben can't even believe it. Zach Wilson. Zach says she broke up with him. And we've got the story why, and it is juicy. Baker Mayfield admits the week one game against the Browns is marked on his calendar. Gronk says he's done with football and he's not unretiring. Tyreek Hill says this is to his last year to prove himself. The Seahawks have talked about Jimmy G, the Cowboys, and Dalton Schultz. No progress there in contract talks. Dolphins and Gesicki unlikely to agree to a new deal by the 15th, so he'll play on the franchise tag. All the rest of the NFL news. Plus, the Leafs get Matt Murray, the goalie from the Sens. Geno Malkin hitting free agency. Raquel resigns with Pittsburgh. Joe Sackett becomes the prez of hockey operations for the Avs. You name it, we got it. Notre Dame, where are they going to go? And look who it is. The sports book and Sigley Air, Dave Sherapin, back on Coast to Coast today. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full the circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And them. Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we have to go to San Jose to maybe a small play on San I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. Well, boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. The Brew Crew now have lost four of their last five games, so they can't pull away despite the minus 240 price they're booked with in the NL Central. This is like the bizarro world of the AL East, right, where everybody seems to be really good, including the Baltimore Orioles. And then you take a look at the Brewers and the Cardinals going, we get no pushback from anybody behind us with the Pirates, Cubs, or Reds. So, yeah, sure, we'll go 5-5 five and five over 10, and we'll hang around in this divisional race until August and through yep. September. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, now let's go to the outfield, and we'll start off with Mike Trout, who looked like he was on his way to a fantasy MVP season, but my gosh, he's in the worst slump of his career right now, George, over the last month. John Carlos Stanton will start. He, of course, plays for the Yankees. Aaron Judge, no question. And then Shohei Otani, and that's really who everyone will want to see play on Tuesday night. Yeah, but Otani was voted in as a pitcher and the DH, right? The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I got roasted on Twitter because I said they're a lot to go over six and a half wins. Folks, the missing piece, if you really study the Panthers and you, and you learn what they're looking at there, they were a dreadful quarterback last season. Matt Rule's personnel control made a decision. He was going to have someone to compete for that starting job, and it's going to be Mayfield. Mayfield will one up winning that job. He, he's got to win it. They need him to win it. He's going to give him some stability. The Sports Grid Network. You smelling all this, Gary? Love that smell, KG. 
See, this is what retirement is all about. Slowing down, smelling stuff, like these. This smells like, oh. <laughs> Covering the spread, baby! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! What are you looking at, Gary? Stop looking at my flowers, Gary. Avert your eyes. So you got to get on the BetMGM app. You bet 10 bucks on the Open Championship and win $200 if any player makes a birdie. Gee, do you think that's going to happen? PGA OC 2022 is your bonus code. That's PGA OC 2022 to get in on the action. 200 bucks is like they're just giving it away. 10 bucks, you bet on the Open Championship, they're handing you 200 bucks within five minutes. It's a beautiful concept. All right, Carver High. We went for it last night with Max Scherzer on the road in Atlanta when everybody thought it'd be a half game lead when they woke up today with the Braves catching up to the Mets in the East. That didn't happen. It's back to two and a half and Scherzer was brilliant. He certainly was, Scotty, that's for sure. Seven innings, nine Ks, no walks, one run. Scherzer was outstanding and the Mets got themselves some timely home runs. How about Louis Guillaume going yard, Scotty, to make it 3-1 to one on SNY? Sounds like quite a career. Guillaume gets one deep to right field. Back goes Acuna looking up, and it's out of here! Luis Guillaume with his second home run of the year. Guillaume with a blast. His second extra base hit of the night, and the Mets now have a 3-1 to one lead in the eighth. You know, the least likely guy to hit a home run on that team uh, does it. And I guess it doesn't matter who makes it happen. Uh, he got it done. They got it done. I thought that win last night was enormous for them because, you know, they have to hear the Braves creeping up on them. They absolutely do. Uh, the Braves got, it got a little sweaty in the bottom of the eighth, but uh, the Mets got out of it. They added on some insurance in the ninth. Let's hear from Buck. Scotty, of course, Mets manager Buck Showalter says he had an outstanding seat for Scherzer's performance, and boy, did they need it last night. Look, Max was really good before his injury, but these two starts, he's taken it to another level. What have you seen in him since he's come back? Well, it's, it's fun to watch that. You know, you pitch in front of a full house on the road with a gray uniform on, and I think Max kind of, you know, he, he rises to a lot of moments, but... Uh, that was, that was fun to watch. I had a good seat. He uh, great tempo and command of all his pitches and a very lethal lineup. And uh, to be able to do it any time, especially on the road, that was uh, that was something. And you see him get back on the horse. Big strike out there with uh, Rosario, I think it was. But uh, I thought Otto had a big inning for us. And, and uh, Edwin, you know, I, I don't ever take that for granted. That's special, uh, what he's been doing for us this year. I mean, that's the thing that stands out to me. If you remember when they got Diaz, he was nothing but a bum, and he got abused by the New York media like no other the way he came to City Field and was disastrous for the Mets. He couldn't get anybody out. He lost every time he pitched. He blew every game that he pitched. And now, what does he have, 19 saves, and he is lights out. I think he struck out the side in the ninth last night, Mike, to close the door. Uh, he certainly did. He was outstanding. You're right. Uh, what a change Diaz has been from when he first got there. Uh, really made a complete turn, and now he is a great closer again for the Mets. Next, let's go to Cleveland and the White Sox, Scotty. They're actually playing a doubleheader today. First game in Cleveland right now. Shane, don't call me Justin Bieber, was on the hill for the Guardians. They are up 4-1 to one in the ninth inning right now against the White Sox, who cannot get out of their own way once again, Scotty. Last night, it was the kid Nolan Jones, who Cleveland called up last week, one of their top prospects, a pair of RBI doubles. Here's the second one on Bally Sports Cleveland. Two on, nobody out. 
Nolan Jones the batter. Jones rocks one deep right center field. That's in the alley. That'll go to the wall. Fran Miller around third. He will score. Him in is right on his heels. He's coming home. Here's the throw to the plate. He is saved. Ball goes to the backstop. Jones down to third. A two out double. Puts Cleveland ahead now seven to four. I mean, there comes a point when we're going to just stop uh, trying to believe that the White Sox are anything I but a below 500 team. I mean, they continue to disappoint last night. I bet against them. Here they are losing today. Game one of the doubleheader. Uh, what? I'm not going to be surprised they get swept today. I'm not going to be surprised either. Uh, Lance Lynn, of course, started for the White Sox last night, Scotty. He was awful. Four innings, eight runs, bunch of walks, uh, and... Short and sweet after the game, he let you know what he thought of his performance. How did you feel your stuff was today, Lance? Uh, the score tells you all you need to know. It doesn't matter how you feel. If you give up eight runs, you're horse There you go. <laughs> Look out. I think that pretty much summed it up. <laughs> Lance uh, not beating around the bush. Awful performance last night uh, by him. Next, let's go to St. Louis. Cardinals. Beat the Phillies again, Scotty. Six to one last night. Nola was cruising, and then the wheels came off the bus. Corey Dickerson first hit him up for an RBI double. Then the big home run for Dickerson on Bally Sports Midwest. Corey Dickerson. And Dickerson with a high fly ball into deep right field. Castellanos back at the wall. Gone! Two-run blast. Dickerson. He's driven in three tonight. Yeah, I thought Nicholas was good again for the Cardinals, uh, and I bet on him last night at Bush, and uh, there you have it, another uh, cash ticket. I like the way this guy's pitched this year for sure. Now let's get to the uh, post-game stuff for the Phillies, Scotty. Of course, they are going to Toronto tonight to take on the Blue Jays for a couple of games. They will be without four players including catcher JT Real Muto, none of them vaccinated. We know the rules with Toronto. If you're going there, all the players have to be vaccinated. Real Muto, Scotty, he is not going to let the nation of Canada tell him what he's allowed to put in his body. He does not care that he is giving up $260,000 over the next few days. Here he is. I just, I mean, I'm a healthy 31-year-old professional athlete. Um, that I just didn't feel a need to get it. Um, I've had COVID a couple of times and super mild symptoms uh, back when it first came out. And when it came time to decide whether um, I needed a vaccine or not, I uh, talked with a couple of doctors that I knew and told them my story and just really decided I didn't think I needed it. And I, I wasn't going to take it just because I was told to, basically. So mm -hmm. Even if it meant not missing, because you're going to forfeit a good amount of salary. Yeah, but I mean, what's 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 money when I'm not going to let Canada tell me what I do and don't put in my body for a little bit of money? It's just just not worth it. Little bit of money. <laughs> little bit, little of, bit money. of money. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of money to some people. Uh, anyway, I I'll tell you this. I, I mean, here they are again. Uh, I woke up this morning to threats of we're all dying. There's a new strain that's Sid vicious, yeah. and and we're all doomed with the new uh, strain, and and that. Everyone needs to start wearing masks again, and, and we're all, you know, finished. It's over. Run for your life. I'm so sick and effing tired of hearing of this. And, and the thing is, is it's everyone's sick and tired of it. And let me tell you something else. We've already seen what people think of wearing masks, okay? Uh, how's that gone over with the airlines? How many people have been punched in the mouth on an airplane with the mask argument? People are not going to wear the masks. And they are done listening to governments tell them what to do. These are the same idiots like this guy Boris Johnson they just threw out of office or this hack prime minister in Canada that's an ass hat. No one's listening to anybody, let alone that senile guy we got in this country running things. What is he, 140? Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penalty. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In-game, live, I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a In-game, live, oh, prime yeah, time. In-game, yes. live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. The Pat McAfee Show. Anyway, have you ever devoured hot dogs like that ever? No. Like, have, you, have you thought about it? Could you could you enter that challenge? No. So I'm a good chugger, like a liquid chugger. I can make things disappear, like uh, Badlands. I think I could get Badlands uh, a gallon of lemonade at some point. The eating thing, I can't though, Shams. You love lunch. We all know that. Yeah. Have you ever attempted no, I'm not, the? Uh... I'm, not, I'm not. I got I got one or two hot dogs in me. I don't think I can devour them like 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 Joey Chestnut. I'm sorry. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. So, Connor, you see the odds. How do you blend the future and all the changes we will see in the coming years with what is actually going to happen in the present? I don't think it makes any difference. I think this; those are two totally separate deals. I, I don't think USC's 2022 outlook is dependent on what happens, you know, with their future move to the Big Ten. I think it's dependent on whether or not Caleb Williams is actually going to be good against a defense who can actually who can actually play football. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Close, you can get some California programming. Get ready for one of the most expensive campaign races we've ever seen on your TV sets. Have you watched a Giants or yes. a Padres game? Yes, and the ads are absolutely insufferable. Vicious, I would say. Just, I mean, they're going at jugulars. Like, they're doing some real nasty, nasty <laughs> stuff to each other. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. To roll with a guy like Xander Sabi that's as hot as he is. I think that you have to have a small piece of him in some aspect because history says at this tournament that guys that come in playing very well, whether it's a win in, in the five or six weeks coming in or a bunch of top tens in the five or six weeks coming in, they usually perform very well. Right. Uh, I think that you have to have a small piece. The Sports Grid Network. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. All right, Carver High. Now, just to finish what I was saying, like, look, I had it, right, in the beginning in 20. And uh, it was bad. I mean, I got really sick and I was admitted to the hospital, the whole deal. I mean, it was brutal. So after that, obviously, I wanted no part of that again. So I went out and got uh, as many shots as humanly possible. Like, I've had four shots now and, you know, two boosters, two vaccines. And I just honestly, uh, really, like, like, let's just get down to it. I just don't care anymore. I don't even care. I, I just, if they call me tomorrow and say, I got to get another shot, I'll go get it. And I, until then, I really don't even, I honestly care if I get it. I don't even get, I'm so sick and effing tired of hearing about it every single day on the news telling us we're all going to die and everyone's dying and everyone's going to, I just die then, then die. I don't care. I'm done with it. And so is everyone else, including athletes. People every day, Joe's. No one cares anymore. I don't even care if I get it. Like, have at it. I mean, what else are we going to be? How about this? They go from this to trying to tell us we're all going to get monkeypox. And then now they got some new thing in Wuhan that all the people are getting over there. Let me tell you something, how much I care about China right about now. Here's your lips on my ass. I don't care if they all die. Everyone. I don't care about anybody. I don't care. Stop telling us we're going to die of some cold we're going to catch. Kiss my ass. I'm done with it. 
I don't even care. If I get it, how about who was the guy the other day? Uh, I love the guy Basset Hound. I'm never going to tell anybody if I have it. I'm just going to go <laughs> give it to everybody. Uh, as they say, uh, anything can happen when you walk out the front door, Scotty. Well, what do you uh, got? You got happen. some kind of haunt. You've been coughing for a week and a half. I caught it. I, I caught got, it just looking at you. I don't got any kind of haunt. I'm actually, I'm actually, as we knock on the glass here, uh, I'm one of the ones who has not uh, gotten it since it came. So yeah, I am, a uh, picture of Elf Garver High. It's a steady diet of, of buffalo wings and Bud Lights. Now that's no. living. I mean, to tell you, my man Carver High lives large. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, uh, I think it is alcohol. Like that time we were in Vegas, I think that I just, I, I just, it just stayed away from me because there was so much alcohol uh, that we were drinking right. that I was that just wanted no part of we me. We drank two hundred and thirty um, cans of beer in three days. Yeah, yeah, that that's it. Um, let me give you the recap. It's time for the lion's share, of course. Uh, Bet MGM. Let's fly here. Uh, yesterday, Scotty, we split the K props. Is what it is. Scherzer was good to us. Uh, Urena got over the two and a half for you in the Rocky game. He was able to stretch it to three. Uh, Machado went yard in that game for a homer. But here's where we made the money last night. The game props, Scotty. A, a sweep. Three and zero. Oh. Mets win in the under. Winner. Boston and Tampa both score four or more. Winner. Under in the first five. Arizona, San Francisco. Winner. So 3-0 and with the game props last night. Uh, that is how we do it on the lion's share. Let's start with the strikeouts. And, of course, whenever our boy Ace Ventura, Garrett Cole, is on the mound for the Yankees, we get him involved in the lion's share. Seven and a half for Cole tonight with the Reds coming to the Bronx, Scotty. Believe it or not, Cole under seven and a half in four of his last six starts, but he's got the Reds coming in tonight. What say you? Yeah, I'm going over here. The Reds suck. They're 20 games or whatever <laughs> under 500. I think Cole is going to make mincemeat out of him. He'll strike out 10. Now, the next one for us, I'm on with you as well. I'm on the over for Garrett Cole tonight. The next one's going to be tricky. We have a guy making his first start of the season chris sale off the aisle has not pitched all year we did see him last week destroy a tv at worcester four and a half for sale down at the trop tonight for the red sox against the rays minus 150 to the over plus 105 to the under for sale in his season debut yeah i just like the way he pitches if he's healthy enough to go out and throw then he's going to strike out six or more so forget about that four and a half i'm on the over I'm on the over as well. The Orioles are red hot. They are in Wrigley tonight to take on the Cubs looking for nine in a row. Jordan Lyle, Scotty, has been very good during this stretch for the Birds. Four and a half is Lyle's number tonight. Minus 120 to the over, minus a buck 15 to the under. I will tell you, as good as Jordan pitches, he is under this four and a half number in six of his last eight starts. Jesus, but he's facing the Cubs, and they're a minor yeah. league team. I'm going over. Over for Lyles tonight. I am with you. Next, Spencer Strider of the Braves against the Mets down in Atlanta tonight. Now, Spencer is at 6.5, minus 155 to the over, plus a buck 10 to the under. His last two starts, Scotty, 11 strikeouts and 12 strikeouts, including that nine in a row to start the last game. What do we think with Strider with the Mets tonight? How can I get off of this guy striking out, you know, seven-plus guys? Uh, he had 11 and 12. Christ, I'm on the over. On the over for Strider, uh, he has been excellent. We're going to keep the train running, even though it's minus 155. It is home run time. The taters for tonight. We will start with Byron Buxton, who is going to the All-Star game for the Minnesota Twins. They take on the Brewers tonight. We're looking for lots of homers. Buxton's got three in the last 10 days, 23 on the season, plus 250 for Buxton tonight. Yeah, where, where's that game? Is it in Mini? Uh, that game is in Mini tonight, I, would, I believe. Uh, yes, the game is in Minnesota. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not feeling it tonight. I'm going to say no. It's no for Buxton. Next, Carlos Santana. So smooth. Three homers over the weekend. 
for the Mariners against the Jays. They're hot. Eight in a row also like the Orioles. They're in Washington tonight, who stinks. They've got Josiah Gray on the mound, gives up a ton of homers. Santana plus 300 tonight to stay hot. I say no. That cools off after uh, his hot streak over the weekend. I think uh, he'll ice down a little bit. I got a lot of hot streaks, Scotty. Corey Seager, homers in four straight games, five of the last six games. He is now up to 20 on the season, plus 260 for Seager. And, of course, Caprillion's going for the A's tonight, and he stinks. Yeah, I like this one. I'll go with Seager to hit one out. Let's go, baby. He's got three homers against the Athletics this year as well. And I always go to Colorado in some aspects, Scotty. Last night, we got Machado. We got a little screwed last night. Bryant doesn't play. He goes on the paternity list. The Pirates sat Cruz when we were looking at a fat price for him last night. We got screwed on the home runs yesterday on the lion's share. But tonight, Luke Voigt is going to come through for us. Now, this is a low home run price. We usually don't see 170, Scotty. But Voigt in Colorado against the Rockies has a couple of home runs against them this year. I like Voigt. Why not? I'll go with Voigt. We like Voigt. I'll go with it. And you see the price? Uh, they don't want to uh, – I think they think he's going to hit one too at, at 170. I, uh, so I'll go with it. There you go. Our taters for tonight on the line share. Next – Game props. Let's stay hot here. And that includes the Orioles, Scotty, staying hot. How about an Oriole win at Wrigley against the Cubs and the game to go over five and a half? So we move that total down a couple of runs. Orioles to win parlayed with it, plus 145 tonight. I'm on that. Yeah, I think that'll happen. Let's go. Last night, we went under with the Mets and the Braves. Tonight, we're going to look for both teams to score three or more runs, which also would keep us under the number of the game. But both teams to score three or more at plus a buck ten. Peterson and Strider tonight. Even though Strider K's a lot of guys, Scotty, I think both teams will get some runs. Yeah, I, I'm leaning on yes, but, you know, Strider doesn't give up three runs a game. So I'm going to say no. No for number two. The final one that I will give you for the game props tonight, we will go to Anaheim. Astros and the Angels. We have Syndergaard and Garcia on the mound. This is our under. Astros and Angels under four in the first five innings, plus 100 here. So we're getting some plus money. Under four in the first five innings, Syndergaard and Garcia tonight, Angels and Astros. Yeah, I don't believe that either. I think they'll uh, go over four in the first five innings uh, because oh, both these guys man. give up four plus runs a game. That's just all there is to it. I'm looking for a little late night, sleepy late night in Anaheim tonight uh, between the Astros and the Angels. Things will get going uh, a well, little bit later on. In then do what all the fans do there. They smoke a bone, go in, grab a beer, grab their seat, put their legs up over the row in front of them because no one's there, and you just enjoy yourself and get a little sleepy. Like, can you imagine those people out there? They can only go to the game just to watch Trout and Otani. They have no reason. No, they can't possibly think the team is ever going to win baseball games. So all you're really doing is you're paying money to watch those two guys play. And that's it. Team has no Listen, hope, no prospects, no nothing. I told you many times what I used to do. Uh, I lived 15 minutes from that uh, ballpark, you know, from Anaheim to Huntington Beach. And I used to go to games all the time by myself. And I would literally move around the stadium and sit in different sections all by myself. No one ever there. And I would just drink beer and I would just just be blown away at how exotic the weather always was at game time at 72 degrees perfect light wind hot chicks everywhere even though no one's in the game there's still thousands of hot chicks there i mean there's no better place uh, than dodger stadium and angel stadium to watch baseball and petco for that matter when it comes to the hotties i mean to tell you it's as good as it gets <laughs> The Lion's Share, presented by BetMGM. 
Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. Kevin Durant made a decision that only, you know, he can make in terms of going to the Nets and requesting a trade out of Brooklyn. And uh, from everything I'm told, uh, that stance has not changed. He, there's been no signal that he's going to back off of that. If anything, that stance is expected to continue. And the Phoenix Suns, uh, from everything I've been told, are his number one preferred destination. That's a great I think thing. there's, a, there's right. a desire to go play with Devin Booker, to go play with Chris Paul. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The Utah Jazz here quickly. Look, uh, my read on Donovan Mitchell not requesting out slash Utah saying, we are going to stick with Donovan and rebuild around Donovan is more that they're not trading Donovan Mitchell until a Kevin Durant deal gets done. Because KD gets traded, and then all of a sudden the Miami Heat pivot and say, okay, here's our best offer, everything on the table. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Well, you know, Kershaw's only made 11 starts and a 2.4 ERA, 1.01 whip. He's certainly an all-star. I mean, uh, who, who would you take over if you, if you didn't want to go with Clayton? Uh, Gonsolin's probably the play that no one talks about enough. I know some people argue that he should start the all-star game over Alcantara because it's in L.A. I mean, that's the only reason you'd be starting him because it's in L.A. Other than that, I think, by the way, if you're going to start somebody in L.A., wouldn't it be Kershaw? Not so much Gonsolin anyway. The Sports Grid Network. All right, we're all back on Coast to Coast, of course. Uh, Dubsy joins us, Dubs Anderson, to uh, break down the Open Championship as we get ready for the start of the best major on Thursday. Uh, at the very least, uh, this is where real men play golf over at St. Andrews on the Lynx course. And uh, to a man, Dubs, they all, like Tiger Woods, you name it, they all say the same thing about uh, this kind of golf, uh, this type of golf, this kind of golf course, uh, these kinds of conditions. Uh, you know, all I ever hear about when it comes to the Open Championship is that it's different than everything in the States, which I think is vanilla. After watching these crappy John Deere and shaving cream golf tournaments, uh, that are so embarrassing. Meanwhile, they make fun of the live tournaments. I don't know what's worse, but this is for real men over here. The Open Championship, the 150th version. And I got to tell you, there's nothing like it. I love it. Early morning golf. Let's go. Wake and bake. Let's go, baby. The home of golf, the old course at St. Andrews, the 30th time we've stopped here, Scotty. And this is a really special place. It's just an aura about being on the grounds. And look, the golf courses are totally different to what we see here stateside. Out here in the States, it's bomb and gouge. Who hits their driver the longest? Who's got the best putter for the week? But over there playing 
Lynx Golf. I mean, you need a lot of good fortune. The bounce needs to go in your favor. Avoid some of these deep, you know, pop bunkers. What's Mother Nature going to turn up for us? If we get win, it could be tough, maybe six, seven under par, but it looks like maybe weather's not going to be a factor. And then we push 18, 19 under par. It changes the golf course day to day. It changes from shot to shot. And this is where every skill set is tested. Every trick in the bag you need, you need that golf IQ, that experience. And for a golf course, like St. Andrews, there's a lot of blind tee shots. So how, how do you get past that trap? Well, whoever knows the golf course best, a guy like Tiger Woods, who everyone's been talking about, this is his favorite golf course in the world. He's gone two from two at the majors. Why not this one? Experience counts for more, especially when you're playing Lynx golf. You need a chess player this week, not a big bomber, Scotty. I'm absolutely jacked up for this one. And who's going to get it done on Sunday afternoon? I mean, so many storylines Brewing up on the course, off the golf course. Xander Shoffley's finally found the killer instinct. You've got your world number one who no one's talking about, Scotty Scheffler. And then you've got a guy like Colin Morikawa who really surprised a lot of us last year. Missed the cut the week prior. Shows up and wins the thing. Special times. All the past champions are at the golf course, except for Greg Norman, that is. So I'm pumped up for it. Great week. So I, I don't think anyone's ever partied harder than uh, Stuart Sink when he won the Claret Jug. He <laughs> drank for a year straight every yeah. single day. And then Morikawa talked about how it sucked giving back the Claret Jug. What is it about that thing that makes, uh, I, I think it's so special above all the others. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm the last guy standing uh, in the room when it comes to everyone picks the Masters. Uh, yeah. I don't know anyone that thinks the Open is the greatest of the majors except me. I, I don't even think it's close. Like, I refuse to acknowledge that the Masters is better than the Open Championship. I think the courses are better. I think the golf is better. I think the bunkers make it better. I think the wind and rain makes it better. I think uh, watching uh, guys suffer on a golf course is better. Uh, I think the Masters, uh, all these guys that play that golf course own it. They know it so well. They know every undulation. They know every bounce. These guys, when they play on this golf course, don't know jack. They have no clue where that ball is going to go and where it's going to bounce. And that means, to me, it's better than the Masters. Now, everyone says I'm crazy, and I think everyone sucks. No, I, I, I think you're totally right, Scotty. I, I wouldn't go against you in that argument. I mean, this is where the sport was created. Back, back in Scotland, I mean, old Tom Morris, this is where it was all shaped up. And a lot of guys respect, and you've seen it from past winners here, Arnold Palmer, Jack, how much respect they put on winning here, and especially at St. Andrews. They say, you know, the resume is not complete until you win at the old course. I know for Tiger Woods, this means a lot to him. So when you hear these greats, you know, talk on, talk about, I mean, Jack Nicholas was honored there this morning. It's just a special feel, a special event, and, and that's one element we don't really see out here stateside. If we get bad weather, okay, you know, play suspended. Over there, that's what makes the golf course. That is what makes the tournament, and not everyone's built for it. Scott, you'll see some of these names go up in flames over the weekend, making you know triple bogeys, quadruple bogeys, because they just don't have these tricks. They've come from playing here where not everything is tested. There, the golf course is going to test you around the greens, and everyone's going to get some bad breaks. Don't go stomping your feet. You go into a pot bunk. You have to take an unplayable. You go from making an up-and-down easy par to making a triple bogey. This is Lynx Golf, and I think that's what makes it really, really special. And I'm with you, mate. I want to see these guys absolutely beat up. If you want to be the champion golfer of the year and lift that Clara jug, you've got to earn it. You've got to earn it if you want to pour a couple of cold tenants into that Sunday afternoon. I got to tell you, uh, you know you know who I like. Terrell Hatton is the guy I'm betting on to win it. He's done very well uh, in the Open Championship the last few years. He's been right there. He's got a temper. Uh, I like that about him, slamming clubs, getting all like cussing and fired up. Uh, I like Fleetwood for what he's done in open championships. I like Finau for what he's done uh, in open championships. And my outsider, same reason for what he's done in opens, is King Louis. King Louis. I mean, that's where he got his last you know, big win back here in 2010. I look at winners of the open championship, they're, they're all – you know, strategic, Scotty. It's all about finding the fairway, working out the greens. And this is where you need some real artistry. It's not about, okay, it's 150 yards to the pin. No, 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 no. It's 30 yards short of the green. Where's the miss? What's the wind doing? So there's so much more that comes into it. I love some of those picks. Um, I, I think Louis Ustazen, you know, he's shown glimpses there in the couple of events we've seen 
uh, up on the Live Series. But again, this is all about golf IQ, about experience. And this is a tournament where we've seen some of the older guys get in the mix due to that fact. I mean, Tom Watson was 59 years of age, mixing it with the best of the world for Tyrrell Haddon. He's won twice here in the Dunhill Links on this golf course. That's the prototype. He's a shot maker. He's got that creativity. He's great around the greens. One of the best putters out there on tour. That's what it's going to come down to for me this week, Scotty. He's got the experience. And people say, why haven't they had more success playing on the PGA Tour? A goal like Tyrrell Haddon? Well, that's not what he's used to. His biggest strength is coming up on these Lynx golf courses. That's going to suit him well this week. I love that pick. And it's good value for Tyrrell. Hey, so I love that 5 a.m. tea time of Morikawa, Rory, and, and uh, Shoffley. What do you think of that group? Uh, I mean, you, you can't make a case that Roy McIlroy is not going to be a factor. Everything says that he will be there Sunday afternoon. He's playing angry. He's motivated. Give him a golf course where it's going to test him, get his full attention. He's going to be dangerous. Colin Morikawa, I feel like he's sleeping under the radar a little bit. But again, what did he show us last year? People say, well, he can't play links golf. No, 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 not, not the case. He can hit his marks better than anyone. If it plays easier, which I think it will be, Colin Morikawa could be a factor. For Mr. Xander Shoffley, I mean, what happened to him? He has found something at the Travelers. He backed it up at the Pro-Am. He backed it up again there last week at the Scottish Open. Maybe the, the smiling assassin. I just question how long that run can go on for. But as he showed us last week, he's really good at links golf. It's not about going after the golf course. It's about keeping yourself in play, taking the most of your opportunities when they present themselves. And he's got to be leaning uh, on that confidence of late. So Xander Shoffley, that could be a great play. So our boy Halitosis, uh, Zalatoris, <laughs> is uh, going over there. In, in my view, uh, in the majors this year, I think he played the best golf. Uh, I know he didn't win, yes. but I, I thought he played the best golf. How do you think he's going to do at St. Andrews? Look, I, I was big on him last week, Scotty, and he didn't look good. But again, uh, he loves the, the golf course. He loves the style of golf. That's what he tells us. If there's no wind... I think Willie Z could be a problem. If you just give him, you know, target golf, that's his best asset. He's the best iron player on the PGA Tour. I think he's been the form player this season. But again, you add a bit of extra pressure this week, the 150th Open, all those champions there at St. Andrews. I don't know if he's a, I hate saying the old C-bomb, Scotty, if he's a choker late on Sundays, but there's a bit more prestige. We up the ante this week. And again, he's been there so many times. I don't think these are lessons learned. I think it's now a bit of scar tissue for Will Zalatoris. Not to say that you know he didn't put um, every you know step forward there late on Sunday at the U.S. Open. I just think the circumstances are not great. He didn't look good last week at the Scottish Open, so I'm a little hesitant to get behind old Willie Z. And what happened to him last year? He walked into the rough. He got injured. Had to pull out the event. So he looks like he's put on a couple of pounds this year. But I'm not getting behind Willie Z for this one. How about uh, Fitzpatrick? He won the U.S. Open. Uh, and we know that he grew up playing on these kind of golf courses in England. So uh, you got to like him in the mix in some capacity, don't you? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, he finally got that breakthrough win. So I think that takes a lot of pressure off the shoulders. He's got a great short game despite doing the left hand low. Who knows what that's all about? But again, I look at a guy like Justin Thomas, Scotty, who also had a recent win at a major championship at the PGA. I think he's made for this one. I mean, you want shot making, you want creativity. I think it's going to come down to who has the best short game, who can get up and down. Uh, good vibes for JT, and you can get him at 21 to 1. I think that's a fantastic number. So I'm probably leaning towards JT more so than Fitzpatrick out of your recent major winners. And I'm not big on Scotty Scheffler. I don't think the high ball flight, the bomb and gouge that we see played so well from Scotty Scheffler matches up well to Lynx Golf. So he's probably one of my big fights for the week. Justin Rose has done very well. He's won a Scottish Open before. He's finished second at the Open. He played great in Canada at the RBC. Do you think the old vet could get going uh, this week at St. Andrews? I do. And this is the week, Scotty, where we're going to see a Justin Rose, an Adam Scott, a Stuart Sink, one of these old boppers just find their game because it's not about distance. It's all about you know, knowledge, golf IQ, knowing these style of golf courses. What does Rosie do best? He's a fantastic iron player. So when the wind, he's going to be good. If it plays, uh, you know, a little easier, he doesn't have to worry about distance off the tee. We're seeing a very firm old course. So there's plenty of running out this week for the older guys to get themselves in the mix. I don't mind the small ball, not to say that Rosie plays it that way, but I think he could be a factor. I'm telling you, Scotty, there's going to be one of the guys over the age of 40 late here on Sunday, 
pushing their claims. And I'd love to see it. I, I think, again, that's what makes this event so special. The, the US Open, the PGA, those golf courses, they're far too long. It only gives us a small sample size of who can actually win the event. And again, back to Tiger Woods. This is one of the few chances, one of the few golf courses where he can actually contend. So that's what I like about it. So what's the weather? You said it's supposed to be good. It's looking pretty good, Scotty. We're seeing a little bit of wind later in the afternoon. So that's one thing to keep in, in mind, especially for any of the punters who get involved with the live betting. We'll see some really low scores early Thursday, but then we see a bit of regression. We saw it last week with the Scottish Open. If we get a bit more wind, maybe it plays tough, but everything tells me, Scotty, we're going to hit double digits under par. It suits more the American style of playing. You know, your better iron players can really target some of these pins and be a little bit more aggressive. But again, the biggest defense here is going to be the bunkering, the undulation around the greens, but they won't cut them too quick because we saw that back in 2015 when the greens got too quick. We couldn't even play on the golf course. They had to push it back to Monday, and that's where uh, Adam Scott famously choked uh, the behind off there on the back nine, four over pass, and not a good one. This is what the Open does, Scotty. When we talk about history, famous collapses as well. Jean Vanderville, do you remember that one? I mean, of had course. it in the bag, and then just he takes the shoes off, he's jumping in the water, he makes a bogey to send it to OT, and then still loses. So this one's going to provide everything. It sounded like us leaving the pub that night. No shoes on, <laughs> couldn't find the car, got the arrested, shirts off. woke love up it. near the train tracks. <laughs> yeah, you hey, love it, Scotty. This is your event. This is your event, a pit bull, son. Hey, uh... Unfortunately, I didn't have time to talk to you about Joker, whether he's going to play in the U.S. Open or not. Nice win over Kyrgios at Wimbledon. All right, Dubsy. He's not allowed. He's not allowed. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game everybody. live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What do you make of the changing landscape of college sports? College sports is changing at a rate that I think a lot of people are really uncomfortable with. So everybody's trying to figure out what's next, right? But what's now, in my opinion, is really, really interesting because the SEC made this move a year ago and the Big Ten finally answered. And now you're like, all right, finally, it isn't just going to be the SEC versus everyone else. It's going to be the SEC and the Big Ten versus everyone else. The Sports Grid Network. The Pat McAfee Show. I was joking with uh, with a couple of my buddies um, on the squad, and I said, could be a long training camp for the offense. I like the way our defense is, is looking and playing, and, and just on paper, it, it looks like they're going to be pretty formidable. So it could be, could be some growing pains for the offense, which would be great for us. It would be nice to, uh, to take our lumps uh, from time to time. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. NBC reconfiguring its television product. They shut down their regional sports networks last year, and they're offering a direct-to-consumer service. Now, the Olympic Channel, which opened a number of years ago with 35 million homes, key to Olympic programming that you can get only on that particular channel, is now shuttering. But they did say before the fall is over, they will announce a new Olympic strategy. And of course they will, and it will involve streaming. NBC is the most prolific investor in the history of the Olympic movement. And since the games will return to a 
more reasonable for the United States anyway time zone for advertisers with Paris and then LA they have to get their act straight relative to streaming this will be the first step sports professor Rick Haro daily Sounds like Carver High's got the MILF story of the month. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are in the dead zone of NFL news, that's for sure. That little three, four week period before training camp starts. So that's when you usually get stories like this. Zach Wilson, Scotty, Jets quarterback. Uh, he's been in the news, not in the sports section, though, uh, on social media, that's for sure. So Zach Wilson's ex has been running around and now dating his old best friend who was the wide receiver on the BYU team. He now plays for Washington. He doesn't matter, so who cares? But either way, the reason she says she's not dating Zach Wilson anymore and now dating his best friend is because Zach was having relations with his mom's best friend. So let's follow all this, Scotty. Let's connect the dots. Uh, the, girl, the girlfriend out. Now dating his best friend because he was having relations with his mom's best friend. Now that is a love quadrangle right well, there if you ever could find that it. one, th the first one's revenge sex. And then the second one uh, is just MILF City. Your boy Zach is betting his mom's best friend. And you know she's got kids. So, I mean, this is just beautiful. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Like, look. Remember I told you, uh, Kathy O said she wanted to sleep with uh, Zach. Oh. And she's, you know, my wife's mother, so imagine the audacity of her. But uh, obviously, I think that Zach could bed any number of hotties in New York, and him tapping into his mom's friends, you know, yellow pages, sounds to me like a plan. He might be able to hit a few more of them while he's at it. It sounds like a great idea. I mean, I like his move right there. Why not before camp opens up? Get it all in. It's a, it's a very strong effort from Zach, uh, and he clearly has risen up the charts with a few people. Might not be good at football, uh, but it seems like he's doing very well away from the field. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, my guess is that other guy's not his best friend anymore. No, no, I don't think so.